The Haunting of Bly Manor is the latest creation from Mike Flanagan and the second entry in the Haunting Anthology series. So let's talk about it. The Haunting of Bly Manor is a follow-up to The Haunting of Hill House, and it contains much of the same cast, but they're playing totally different characters, and this is a new story, not a continuation of that story. It's also an adaptation of Henry James's novella, The Turning of the Screw. Real quick before I give you my take on this series, let me know what you thought down below in the comment section, especially how does it compare to The Haunting of Hill House? What did you love? What did you hate? And how do they compare? As a point of reference, I haven't seen The the Haunting of Hill House, so I can't make any comparisons and I won't be doing so throughout this review. But The Turning of the Screw has been adapted a number of times before, including the movie The Turning that came out in January of this year. I did see The Turning and it is not good. So how does this compare? Is this any good? Well, let's get started talking about the good. Probably the best thing about this series for me is that it's jam-packed with complex characters. Everyone is introduced in a way that makes it clear that an interesting series of events led them to this manner, or they're introduced in a way in which they're doing something odd or peculiar, and you're curious, what is going on with this character? And as you go throughout the episodes, we dig deep into all of them to understand why they are the way that they are. While it is a story about a haunted mansion, it also uses the term metaphorically. All of these characters are haunted by their past and it has led them to this moment where we're watching this story about this haunted manor. And the way the show's kind of designed is that the first and kind of last episodes focus in on the main character, but each of the other episodes pick a different character to kind of go deep into their backstory. And so we're introduced and we're frustrated by these characters because we don't know why they're doing what they're doing. And then they get an episode that really fleshes that out and makes all of them more sympathetic and you understand what exactly is going on on a much deeper level. The other thing that makes the characters so engaging is that the series itself is a ghost story, but it's also very much a love story. And through each character, we explore broken, complex relationships, the dynamics between different people. And so you really care about the characters and what happens to them. And then even if there's someone you don't like, there's always a reason that they did what they did and something that caused that. And throughout the series, it goes into all of that and explores this concept of love in a very interesting way, especially in a story about a haunted mansion. And the final important thing with the characters is the performances across the board are great. All of them find a way to make these characters multifaceted. So even jerks have a sympathetic side to them. The manipulative characters have other moments where they're charming and they're able to kind of balance the multiple layers of each of these characters. And so they're true in each moment, but as you learn more about them and as more is revealed, they continue to feel like holistic, fully developed characters and not like they're cheating any of it. While some of them get flashier moments and more dramatic things happen to them, all of them have relationships with other characters that you actually care about. Some of them subtle, some of them big, all of them done really well. Another great thing about this series is that it looks great. Watching it, I was thinking to myself like, why does this Netflix series look so much better than almost every single Netflix original movie? From the production value to the costumes, to just the look of the manor and how creepy a lake can be, to the way that every shot feels like it could be a still that could be released as a promotional image for it. It looks fantastic. Everything's kind of framed in a way to have a symmetry to it and look gorgeous. And finally, as a series, it got more and more engaging as it went along. It kicked off great establishing the characters, the scenario, and kind of had a nice hook at the end of the first episode that made you want to watch the next one. And then as it went along, it kept revealing more and more things that made you want to keep watching. And that only kind of gained momentum as it went along. I watched it over the span of three nights in every single night when we had to stop because it was like 2 a.m. My wife was like, oh, can we watch one more episode 
that's when you have compelling television that kind of has you hooked and you want to keep watching because you care about the story, you want to know what's happening next, and you want to know how these characters' journeys are going to be resolved. From there, let's move on to the mixed aspects of the series. When I refer to the mixed aspects of a movie or series, these are things that aren't necessarily good or bad, but that you need to understand going in and watching the movie or the series. In the case of this one, it's not as horror-centric as you might expect going in. Absolutely, it is about a haunted manor. It does tell a complete and full and satisfying story about the haunting of Bly Manor, but as I mentioned before, this is a series that's about the characters' love and romance. It explores the complexities of love and how it brings the best and the worst out of us. How it can make us better, it can make us worse. How there's people that we love, but that means very different things. It explores that through all of these different characters, their relationships to one another, and their backstories. And so if you go into this just expecting nonstop jump scares and ghosts showing up, that's not exactly what this is. It has a lot more depth to it than just the jump scares. As a point of reference, my wife doesn't really enjoy any horror, and I put the first episode of this on assuming she'd watch it and just drop the series and I'd be watching it by myself. But instead, she got connected to the characters where she really cared what was happening and about their relationships, and so she was even more into it than I was and wanted to stay up even later than I did to finish it as soon as possible. From there, let's move on to the bad. And the big thing here for me is that because the series is most concerned with the characters and their relationships to one another, it comes at the cost of forward momentum and urgency. The central ghost story about the manor is probably two or three hours worth of material, but the series is nine hours long. And what that means is we'll get an episode that'll progress the ghost story about 10 feet and then it pauses to go 20 feet deep with each of the characters. On the one hand, that means that you really care about the characters by the end of the series. But on the other hand, when it comes to the story, it'll start to build tension on a plot line. You care about what's happening, it builds momentum, and then there's a cliffhanger, and we go in a totally different direction, pick up with a totally different character, and go 20 feet deep with them, and set up a different cliffhanger. And so at times it just feels like right when you want to have payoff, it does something different. Without wanting to say any specifics whatsoever, but like you'll get to the end of episode seven, and you'll think, how are they gonna have two more episodes worth of content? It feels like we're getting close to the end of this thing. And the answer to that is that they go really deep, introduce some new ideas, and they take like a subplot from the previous seven episodes and make that front and center. And so it's just a lot of going very deep on what can be a very small amount of story. And in doing this, especially in the last episode, they start to recontextualize everything that you've seen before. You kind of reinterpret it. And by the end of it, I felt like the season was very thematically focused, but it was pretty unfocused when it came to the story because it kept going all these rabbit trails with the different characters and not all of them necessarily went somewhere specific. Another issue is that at times it could feel a little bit predictable or familiar because the works of Henry James, including this particular story, have been adapted a number of times before. If you're familiar with a lot of horror, a lot of this you have literally seen before. And finally, the ghost rules themselves felt fairly inconsistent. All of the characters are either haunted, haunting someone, or haunted by their past. And some of those are literal, some of those are just metaphoric, but in doing so, it just made it feel like they were trying to put creepy images in just to have some of the scares and eeriness, but they're not all fully developed and explained by the end of the series. The main plot line is, but some of these side characters, they have all these haunting elements surrounding them that I don't feel were fully fleshed out and didn't come to a satisfying resolution by the end. 
Real quick, before I give you my final score on this one, be sure to let me know what you thought about The Haunting of Bly Manor and how it compares to The Haunting of Hill House down below in the comment section. Also, if you enjoy horror films and want more of my horror content, check out this playlist right up here. I've done a bunch of horror rankings talking about the iconic films of the genre. If you've enjoyed this review, there's definitely something up there that you will enjoy. The Haunting of Bly Manor is another solid piece of horror entertainment from Mike Flanagan. Felt it worked a little bit better on a character level than on a story level, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Overall, I give it a B plus. It's an eight out of 10 on the entertainment scale, and it is definitely worth streaming if you enjoy horror or the works of Mike Flanagan. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want more horror content, check out that playlist right over there and keep talking movies and TV too much.